You'll love to see it. <laughs> okay. Fire me over the, uh, the link. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, we're here to rejoin you now. Um, we had a little bit of an OBS issue crashed on us and, uh, you know, that happens. And on the left, we see a delayed Siva in a freebet pot from Bill and a jam on the river. Large size on the turn. We don't expect to see much Ace-King. Um, Maybe Ace-King of Diamonds exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay, so just to catch you guys up really quickly, uh, Landon trip over tripped Perkins on table two, the one that we were viewing before. Uh, good enough to reset that table. He jumped out to about an 85K lead initially. He's given some of that back now. It appears as though he's winning about 50K uh, as we are now reset on table two and they sat in the wrong spots. We understand. We're going to get the logos up for you briefly. Um, <clears throat> table one, Landon is down, seems to be somewhere between 25 and 30k, um, but up for the match as a total. We have introduced the hand counter now, maybe a little bit off as we just estimated when we started it today, but it will be accurate moving forward. So we have that to look forward to. Uh, give me one second so I can tweet this out. So many moving parts. Hmm. Match has evened out a little bit now, but Landon still up. Yeah. Still plenty of time for this to be this, the session of blood. The blood that we're all 200K searching one for. Way. Yeah, it appears that uh, Perkins has recouped close to a buy-in, maybe a little bit less. Free bet pot on the right, we see Land and Seba are small size. Um, on this flush draw board, we do expect him to bet quite often and takes it down. <laughs> How much heads up are you playing these days? Uh, not too much recently. I went through a phase um, at the start of the year and end of last year where I was really into it. Um, but now the ac action has slowed down quite a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun game. Um, it definitely puts you through your paces. You have to be um, really willing to, to fight for pots. Are you mostly um, playing cash these days now that traveling for MTTs isn't really a thing? Yeah, pretty much exclusively cash. Um, the the games in London have started um, to pick up again, which has been uh, nice. What nice stakes to get are back you in there. usually playing? Um, so mostly the some PLO private games where um, they'll usually start out at uh, around 5.10 and then get a lot bigger than 510 by the end of the night yeah uh i play in a private game that's half half and it's 2550 with a 50 dollar annie for no limit and 2550 straight for plo uh my last three sessions there i've won 60 50 and 50. nice <laughs> and the plo tends to play 2550 100 200 400 800 1600 the no limit just stays 2550 and I shit well, you not, this is no joke. The swings in the no limit are exponentially larger than the, the PLO playing as, as big as it is. Really? People just, we come out of the PLO round where basically it's flips because everybody's 10 big blinds effective. 
Yeah. And honestly, everybody's really risk averse. So there isn't a whole lot of flipping that takes place. Like usually it's either the button raises and steals or gets all in versus, you know, one of the, the many straddles or mm -hmm. it's just like folds to the 800. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a limp and they just play a heads up like 4k pot and not too much happens. Um, you know, none of us have any fucking idea how to play PLO. I don't know why everybody is insistent upon it, but uh, then you go to the no limit side and everybody's like really comfortable again because even the the fun players like they have their set ranges of hands that they're willing to play with and gamble with and so like the average open is like five to seven x <laughs> it gets straddled to a hundred like maybe half the time and it's still a five to seven x open so like you're seeing opens between like 300 and 500 when we're playing 2550 and like 500 and a thousand when we're playing 50 100. So it's just like the pots just swell so quickly and there are just like so many 20 to 30k plus pots in the no limit whereas it's really rare in the plo side but everybody wants that hour of looking at four cards and feeling like they can make a good hand yeah sounds like that's what that's what plo does to people's people's brains as landon well that's nice on a didn't value pot, yeah uh yeah nine-handed plo to me is one of the worst games ever invented on the planet like hmm. i think i would rather play limit raz yeah so in in london um six card omaha has really picked up um a lot of cards yeah what's, yeah what's uh, so the <laughs> what's the strategy here so <laughs> yeah i mean aces aren't even aren't even worth a lot in there right um the the kind of hand that you want is is called a, a dragon so five or more cards in a row oh okay it's a dragon right right that sounds tasty yeah it's a good hand yeah like how, how do you how does how does aces win right versus I mean, the triple suited dragon <laughs> there's obviously side cards with the aces yeah um but like how does how does aces win against uh six cards in a row with right. like probably more than probably two suits or more yeah let's let's get the triple suited dragon and just yeah. start mashing some chips into the pot and yeah. you know live with the results you can't, you can't go wrong right um, um short deck plo was very popular here for like wow, that sounds that sounds like a horrific game yeah for like six months it was super super popular amongst the high roller scene um while short deck no limit was super popular amongst the high roller cash or like the high stakes cash scene so for like three to six months, I played a lot of uh, 200, 400, 300, 600 short deck. And when I say a lot of, I mean like 50 hours. Um, yeah. But all the guys who couldn't get into those private games were just playing short deck PLO, like Bonomo, so Sovereign, um, and a lot of the guys who consider themselves to be relatively proficient at short deck. And best I could tell, there was no edge. Like, just literally no one had an edge, and they were just flipping every fucking hand. Because, yeah, you know, when you only have two-thirds of the deck, and I guess, like, I don't know, 60 to 70% of it's being dealt out. <laughs> like, you know, every hand's good. Yeah, I don't, I'm not, not a fan of that game, first, first hearing of it. I mean, when I first uh, played Six God Omar, I really wasn't a fan. And yeah. that has grown on me um yeah i i like feeling like there's some level of control and some level of capacity to get outside nice little pot there by landon to get outside the constructs of what we would consider to be discipline right so like no limit's a great example of this we have pre-flop charts sure uh and if you look at the way that they change from being 10 blinds effective to 100 blinds effective it's pretty noticeable but it's still relatively restricted when you start to get like 500 plus blinds effective good luck trying to decipher where the lines of zero ev negative ev and positive ev are deciphered because so much of it is just predicated upon how big the river mistakes are by your opposition right sure. it's like sure we could we could draw a very definitive line in theory land where post flop just plays out perfectly but that's certainly not what's happening i mean i can't tell you how many thousand big blind pots i've seen and played in the last year alone with one pair and hmm. 
you know, in theory land, that's just largely going to be unacceptable. But uh, in practicality, people are just not really adjusting. So I like the ability to kind of like insert yourself there, be a bit of a disruptor, color outside the lines and, and really mix it up. When you're playing like six card PLO, I can't imagine <laughs> that's really an option. You know, you just, uh, you don't get to play any hands that have a hanger or a dangler in it. I mean, it's very easy. It's very easy to uh, to punt preflop. Yeah. Easier than easier than you'd think. No, for sure. I can only imagine. Espe especially when there's like five straddles on. Right. <laughs> and um, yeah, the money just seems to find a way to go in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, it's one of those spots where you're like, if I have any fold equity at all, <laughs> this seems pretty good. But um, I played the stand-up game for the first time in a Hold'em private game. How uh, like amazing is the stand-up it's, game? It's, it's, it's great. It's incredible. It's really remarkable how these things uh, catch fire so quickly. So like bomb pots were originated uh, in Reno. By, oh, really? Yeah, at uh, the Pepper Mill by uh, Jimmy... I'm going to mispronounce. Horikawa, I believe is his last name. Um, they, they were doing it for years. Like... I think they started maybe like 2014 or 2015, something like that. It was just this quiet little thing that was taking place up there. The second it got brought back to Vegas, it it's now on ACR. Like people just play bomb yeah. pots on ACR. It's wild. Yeah, bomb pots are, are huge. I, I like bomb pots actually. They're fun. Texas is the place, man. They play double board bomb pots. It's so much fun. They play double board double board Omaha bomb pots, which to me is less fun. Double board no limit bomb pots are so fucking amazing because of the bluff opportunity that you have, right? Like, if you just have a key card locking on both boards, uh, yeah. you don't really need to have scoop ability uh, yes, in order to zone. actually scoop. Yeah. In the UK, they never really, never really picked up. Um, the closest thing to bomb pots is sometimes people want to do it like a round of pot or fold in Omaha. Oh, okay. So like you um you each put in like three or four three or four blinds or yep. something like that. Mm -hmm. And um you can only pot or fold it, a flop is dealt and you can only pot or fold. That's really close then, to uh, to bomb pot except now you're restricting the bet sizes which really increases volatility. It also sucks yeah. for the out of position player. Like you just get oh, wrecked yeah. being under the gun. Yeah, it's usually a, like a round of four fold. Yeah. Um, get get the blood flowing a little bit. Money Penny is very upset. She said, "I'll just leave. Maybe in the future you guys can show who's up by how much." This is like watching basketball, but with where you have to guess the score. Uh, we're trying our best. I think Landon's up about fifty k, give or take. Um, there isn't really a great way to accurately count. So when you're watching other streams, they're literally just guessing too. I wonder what the next uh, game or spin that will take the Poker World by storm. It might be the stand-up game. That might be it. Stand-up game is nice, man. People go ape shit in the stand-up game. We play stand-up bomb pots, too, because uh, we play bomb pot every dealer change. So sometimes we'll just be in the middle of a stand-up game and bomb pot comes in. That's reckless. Hmm. I think there's a lot of things that could potentially alter the way No Limit's being played. I think, like, the short deck structure is a good example where everybody antes uh, a half ante or whatever. And the button ante is a fool. Although I don't think it should be the button. I think it should be the small blind. I think they should be the ones closing the action rather than the person in ultimate position. <coughs> um, but that's kind of interesting because it facilitates multi-way pots at a much greater frequency, which kind of just like immediately breaks sims and uh, kind of wrecks everybody's study to yeah. some degree. Which is what, which is kind of what you want. You want yeah. to put people out of their comfort zone to make a game, make a game good, make it dynamic. Yep. Roy Someone G. asked in the chat, yeah, what, is the, what is the stand-up game. game? Yeah, go ahead. You can explain. So the, the stand-up game is um, everyone to start with at the table stands up. 
and if you win a hand, then you sit down. The last person standing up, up pays everyone out a penalty. So usually it's like five, about five big blinds. Um, it's kind of like the reverse of the of the seven deuce game, where everyone pays you. So there's a lot more a lot more pain involved. Like um, you, it feels much worse to to have to pay out like a a, a couple k than to um to to collect it. I feel like. Oh yeah, Especially collecting when is when it's going to everyone. Yeah, collecting is meaningless, right? Like winning yeah. five blinds is absolutely meaningless, but yeah. having to pay out forty five blinds to the table. Or yeah, 40 blinds, I guess, is an absolute fucking nightmare. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For some people, especially like uh, the nits who are most probable to lose the stand-up game, it's especially taxing because a 40, bl a 40 blind swing for them is significant. Yeah, and the nits are usually short-stacked as well. So right. <laughs> it's just like, some. <laughs> I'm pretty sure some um, in, in the stand-up game, someone's like cold stack just got, just got scooped away. Yeah. Uh, I mean, being short to, short stack does have its advantages because you just get to like be all in yeah. and win. But yeah, for sure. <laughs> four bet here out of Perkins on yeah. table one. Will we see the rip? Nope, just a call. King Jack three. Check. Good board for Bill. Very good board for Bill. I imagine Landon will have some King Queen, King Jack suited in range. Not a ton. Probably doesn't have much in the way of sets. Threes are low three bet frequency to begin with. Jack's probably low calling frequency. It does just check fold. Uh, yeah, we played a week or two ago and <laughs> Freddie Deeb was like very hesitant to play, but we mm. talked him into it. And Is he uh, a tight guy? Uh, not really. He's splashy, but like, you know, he doesn't necessarily see his edges in the game he's just a, a bit of an old school gambler sure um so we play and uh a hand happens obviously you're just incentivized to play a ton of fucking hands and this the first hand happens where um he raised oh no sorry he's in the big blind so somebody raises uh standard like 350 100 game and or, or we must have been playing 51-2 at the time. So guy opens the 600 and then one of the fun players like clicks it on him and makes it 1600. Uh, I guess it's not a pure click, but you know, whatever. Um, folds to me in the the 100 and I have 5-3 suited and we're infinite deep. We're like 60K effective myself and the fun player. So like, I'm just not folding. The implied odds here are just massive. I know he like overvalues pairs. So before I call, he goes, don't do it, man, unless you have aces. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, okay. So you really have a premium? Great. So I call, Freddie calls uh, out of the straddle and has like 7K behind. Uh, the original Razor also calls. So we go four ways. And I just flop the joint. Comes uh, seven, okay. six, seven six four rainbow. Nice. Uh, so I check. Freddie just leads all in for 7K into like five, give or take. Mm -hmm. uh, or I guess, yeah. Uh, no, I guess it's like closer to seven. Um, original Razor folds. <laughs> the fun player like tanks, 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 smiles, like asks him what he <laughs> has, like ignores the fact that I'm even in the hand and then calls. So I click it to like 15,000, not wanting to lose him. Uh, he then calls that. Turn is brutal. It's just a three putting a one liner out there. It's like, great. So I bet 5,000. Big check raise here by Landon on table two after check, check, flop. Turn goes three quarters here by Perkins. Wins. Um, oh, so Perkins just led the turn there. Landon delayed. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I bet 5K he calls and he has like 25K behind now. River is even more brutal. It's an ace. It's like probably doesn't have aces i show up he folds uh what's ultimately kings and freddie's just like were you bluffing because <laughs> like obviously <laughs> he has like one pair i table the hand he loses so he reloads for 5k which is the minimum because he wants to have 
the ability to sit down without having to pay out uh, 4K to the table. And yep. uh, like two hands later, he's all in ace queen versus. Uh, I can't remember if it was a flip or if he had the guy dominated, but he loses again. Reloads for another 5K. Uh, it goes. And at this point, I'm already sitting. Oh, yeah, obviously, I won the 5 3. Uh, so now, like in orbit later, we're in the blinds. And it goes like uh, 600, call, call. I call with pocket fives out of the small blind. And before Freddie looks at his hand, I, he's, he's like down to the final two or final three, maybe uh, standing. I go, now's a good time to ship it in, thinking like I'm snapping if he shops. Yeah. So he sails in the 5K. Everybody else folds. I beat him in. He has ace queen again. Uh, and we I, we don't see each other's cards, right? We like hold our hands. So the first, yeah. first board comes a five. Uh, and I go, that's me. And I table my hand. And he's just like, you know, whatever. Second board comes queen high. And he goes, that's me. And as he rolls over the ace queen, the case five hits. <laughs> case five. <laughs> like, oh, this Girl. poor bastard. So he ends up getting buried for like 25,000. Still has to pay out the stand up because he ultimately is the last one sitting. Uh, not a fan of the game, to say the least. That's how it goes in, in these games. Someone just gets the worst of it by a lot. Yeah. I've only lost the stand-up game one time, and I joined when it was heads up. I was I was sitting out doing a podcast, uh, and as it ended, two nits were heads up. And I was like, this is going to take for fucking ever. They were both like in the blinds. I was like, I'll just join. <laughs> and I ran good, but I ran bad. I picked up aces, ace, queen, and pocket sevens in a matter of like four hands. And I lose all, f I lose all three of them, to ultimately well, just like finish last in the standup. You, you got punished then, really. I really did. I, I got exactly what I deserved. I would, I would argue the opposite. Actually, it should be the nits who get, who get punished. Well, generally they do. I, I advocate the standup game as much as I humanly can because there's always like two or three guys that are just v pipping like ten percent in the game. And I know yeah. one of two things is going to happen. They're either always going to lose the stand-up game or they're going to just rocket it off being a different version of themselves <laughs> for 30 minutes, which both of similar, those are great. A similar thing happened um, when I played it as well, actually. In there that, were two, the, like, the, the two, two very tight guys at the table, like the final two left in. And then one guy had just like, yeah, rocketed it, rocketed it off in like, not a way you would expect him to. Yeah. We also played the seven play deuce before. bounty, which makes it especially fucked whenever the stand up game is in play. Yeah. Four bet pot or four bet here from Bill. Seen a lot of four bets this session. I was just about to say, we've only seen uh, Bill four bet and none out of Landon. This is kind of like what I was speaking to. Uh, not in the sense that Landon's... Oh, well, there okay, it is. There's a five bet rip. Jax, hold. Nope. Uh, God damn it. Jack! I'm not biased, guys. Oh, pain. Um, Fuck. Uh, yeah, that's brutal. Those spots are very, very annoying. Uh, it re... <laughs> It like reinforces also that Perkins always has it, which is especially annoying. Um, but I think that uh, it's also one of those things where it's just like, you know, at some point Landon's going to have hands to just be all in with in these four yeah. pots. I imagine Landon just having it. <coughs> that would be... Right. That would be something special. Well, okay, another four bet. Another four bet. I like want him to shove, but I like don't want him to shove. I think call is best. I think call is always best for Landon, right? Outside of when he has aces. He's already in the tank. Yeah, to me that signifies like a cusp hand. Tens, jacks. Yeah, ace, I mean the, the interesting thing is players did agree to have ranges for this match. Right. So Bill he he knows what he's he knows what he's doing or he knows what he's supposed to do. Yeah, it's just a frequency um, thing, right? 
like some hands mix. Yeah. So, so when like, we see the when we see the really long tank, that it does make you think maybe Bill's got some suspicious suspicious. Yeah. Thoughts. He just has like a couple hands outside of range where he's like, ah, fuck it, let's peel. Mm -hmm. And then we see a great board for land and the King Four Deuce. He's going to be doing very well on, on that board. Yeah. And he takes it out. Hopefully he didn't have it. That would make me feel better. We are just about at the halfway point. It's 1240 Pacific, so they've been playing for about an hour and 10 minutes. This is scheduled to be another two hour match. You have to be loving these, uh, these early times, given that you're in the UK. I mean, I'm on a late schedule right now, so it hasn't made that much difference to me. Oh, okay, and that's fair. I'm sure if any any time they're playing, I'm I'm gonna find a way to watch. <laughs> I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that one bit. I think even even if I didn't have a, a, a sweat in the match, I think I'd still be still be glued to it. Like, it's crazy to see Landon in here. Um, yeah. Like in in this arena, like it seems surreal. Right. Right. Yeah. Just, it is pretty crazy when you think about it. It's like he was playing one one hundredth of these stakes not that long ago. Yeah. And then not that long ago before he was playing one one thousandth of these stakes. Right. Right, right. <laughs> Another three bet out of Perkins. Hold. Like I was um, just going through some Ch uh, Chicago Joey videos today and as Bill takes down a big one and saw uh the bill perkins podcast actually from like a year and a half ago two years ago yeah and then on, on the bottom for the timestamps it's like thanks landon for the timestamps <laughs> yeah and now he's now he's here it's crazy now he's just uh he's just an ev assassin he's just been trained yeah. to get into high ev environments and just like you know collect Yeah, I think Landon deserves like so much credit just for, I mean, so many reasons like being able to get into this situation in the first place. Yeah. And just how he put himself out there, like networking, and he really got himself into, he got himself into this situation, and like he he deserves it. Yeah, I totally agree, especially like the cost that it comes with too, because you know part of being this high profile. Uh, comes with the inability to get yourself in the juiciest games. Like, he's never going to get an invite to that Bellagio 5000 game. It's just, you know, he's a killer. And that's yeah. that's known. But he's doing, he's doing what he loves, you know. He's, he, he is the child of the sin. <laughs> and he's in the, he's in there right now. He's in the that matrix. That is true. That is true. I I expect that. I expect it's a high probability that he shifts into high roller tournaments. Uh, after this match, it just has like the lowest. Mm, I shouldn't say the lowest barrier of entry necessarily, but for high stakes, it might be the lowest barrier of entry, because it's only a monetary thing, uh, and it probably has like the highest ceiling for him since there's no ability to really shut him out. Bet, raise, call, Perkins, oh. assumedly two outed landed there on the river. Brutal. Yeah, I, I can see that happening. Um, the There's a lot of really, really tough players in those in, in those high rollers. Yeah. Um, it feels like there's a lot of a lot of teams, a lot of clicks. Agreed. Um, and it's probably harder than probably harder than people would think to like break in and be very good in those fields like um at least in the in the online high rollers mm -hmm. the fields have got a lot tougher this year yeah like um 
2020, partly because of COVID. Uh, like the the high roller online tournaments were pretty soft. Yeah. Right. Um, and then in 2021, the like scoop 5k, 10k, even some of the stuff on like GG and the party high high roller stuff. It's pretty much been like the good regs farming the bad regs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Pads was kind of speaking to this uh, with such a massive influx of high buy-ins where the 5k range is no longer even close to the max that one person will put into an event. Um, we start seeing more of like the 10ks, 25ks, even sometimes bigger on there. Um, yeah. A lot of the best players are just like kind of getting eaten alive by the rake. Like, he showed a graph yeah. of, like, the 40 best players um, from past results. And currently, they're all collectively down, like, 7 million, which is about the rake over the first quarter of this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did just see the stat that Perkins has neutralized this match. He's actually up 10K now. Big, big turnaround for wow. Perkins after being stuck about 70 at his peak. Creeping towards a reset on both tables, too. Yep. Yeah, and in a lot of these tournaments, uh, sometimes you'll see, say, an average of, of 60 entries, and there's 59 players who play poker for a living, and it's going to be pretty tough to beat that game. Right. I can't speak as much for, like, the the live high roller scene right now. Um, from what I, I can tell with the Poker Go Studio, it's it's pretty juicy. Like these 10Ks seem to be drawing a pretty big field. Yeah. Probably should get off my ass and actually head down. The, honestly, the challenge is, is that it's a difficult time investment. Even though they're relatively fast and two day events. It's like first is like somewhere between 175 and 200. Um, but like my daily swing in the Bellagio game is 50K. So it's like, do I really want to invest that amount of time to something where I might have like a 20% ROI? If, if you're a cash game player with tournaments, mm -hmm. I feel like even if you think the ROI is similar, you just have to want it. Right. Because playing a cash game and playing a tournament, having the same ROI, it's like two, it's two different beasts. Um, yeah. And a lot of the time, it's it's very hard to achieve the same hourly anyway. Right, right, like yeah. Pretty much always going to be higher. Yeah, I mean, I so, think that, like, for me, it's about hitting the home run, right? So playing events where first place isn't really going to alter anything. Like, don't get me wrong, picking up 200K, really fucking nice event. It's great. Um, but it's also something I can do on an upswing in cash. So it's not... Do you, do that you care about the glory? No. Uh, I'm... I'm 18 years into this game, man. What glory is there? If if I if I know anything, it's that there absolutely is no glory in poker. So you're telling me if there's a one drop in 2021, you don't I, care about the glory? No, literally wouldn't even cross my mind. It would more so just be a matter of could I have a big enough piece of myself to make it worth, like to not not to sound s silly, but like to make it worth winning, like having 10% of yourself. I mean, if you're talking about the 1 million one drop, okay, yeah. Having 10% yeah. of yourself is massive. But if you're talking about the 100K one drop, like just playing a 10K with a relatively tough field, whatever. I'll just wait for five diamonds. Like that moves the needle. It's a 10K event where first is like between 1.9 and 2.2. .2. Like, yeah, winning that is a big deal. Hmm. And it's soft as fuck, all things considered. Like it's not necessarily easy to win, but like, you know, a big chunk of that field is not making money. Yeah. I, I flipped a coin. I was in Prague in 2019 and I, I flipped a coin to go home and play online or go and play Five Diamond. Mm. And it was literally as I was going to the airport in um, in Prague. So I would need to have like jumped on a flight yeah. ASAP. I think it was already day one I had already passed. Mm -hmm. So I would have had to like get on a flight and start playing straight away. You, um, you lost the flip? It didn't, yeah, it didn't come in. It's fair.
I, I had the discipline not to not to flip again. It was smart. Uh, yeah, it's tough. It, it, there actually aren't different starting days, right? The structure is just super slow. So. Um, oh, it might have been it might have been to like day three late reg or something. Yeah. So I think you can late reg to the either the end of day two or dinner time of day two, but uh, I think max late reg you can come in with like twenty bigs. Yeah, I think that was the plan. It was yeah. like it, it sounds about right. Yeah, it was like late day two reg. Which, in that event, it's like particularly wild because people just treat it as this bottomless pit of rebuying. I mean, I've been into it for 50K before where the, the time I was into it for 50K, I bagged day one. I bagged like 100 blinds on day one. I think I bagged like two and a half or three starting stacks and I rebought four times on day two. Well, <laughs> just like the action is wild. It's kind of strange because it's like, well, your big blind per hundred win rate in those early levels is obviously massive if you are skillful, but the variance is also like pretty high too. And coupling that with the fact that you know you're going to re-enter maybe multiple times, uh, it, it becomes a bitter pill to swallow for sure whenever you're just like, I mean, this is going to be the biggest event that I play for the rest of the year. So let's try to win 2 million. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same thing as before. Like, how it's just how much do you love it? Yeah, or hate it, depending or on hate it, yeah. which side you're on. I think I bubbled that year too, which was especially excruciating. Stone? Uh, like two or three out of the money. Um, I got four, eight. I love a four bet here from Bill. Rip it. When Landon tanks, I always just think it's for prosperity. Pros okay. Pro pro that's not what I'm saying. Okay, we win the flip now. Come on. Come on. God damn it. He just always has it. He really does always have it. Imagine, he's gotten to four bet six times this match, and for by all accounts, we think that he's just always had it. Yeah. Who's up this match? It looks like Bill is up about 60. Yeah, they're going to reset on table two here. Oh, the pain, man. The absolute pain. We're not going to beat that nine big blind spot if he keeps running this way. That's for sure. Yeah. It makes it seem like a very big mountain to overcome when the other guy can just get the... You just have to flip a few coins and then if it lands the other way. Yeah. Now it's really tough to beat nine big blinds. Well, remember, they've only been all in pre-flop three times now total, uh, all in a call. And it was Perkins with aces versus kings, Perkins with ace king versus jacks, where he won, and now Perkins with queens versus ace king, where he won. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> that's a three buy and yeah. swing. Definitely no easy task to come in and be a nine big blind spot. It'll be interesting to see Landon's mentality. Because on the other side of it, he won the cooler war versus Bill um, in the in the river all in spots, right? He had the set of threes versus kings. Yeah. Uh, he had the trip sixes versus trip sixes and had Bill kicked. Who do you think is the more tiltable out of the two? It has to be Perkins, for sure. Uh, he has so much more on the line with regards to money, pride, ego, and he doesn't do this for a living. So, like, part of what he enjoys, I think, is being able to ride the emotional roller coaster a little bit. Where for Landon, it's just like business as usual. Flips are going to happen. Yeah. You're going to lose some of them. So much on so much on the land though for Landon. Yeah. It's definitely it takes a lot to keep your composure. Yeah, for sure. Even if it doesn't manifest itself in like serious tilt. Yeah. Mentally staying fully focused. Um, just being able to ex execute all of the things. It's it's not easy. 
Yeah, and I mean, you know, let's be clear. All things considered, Perkins is only winning like 40 or 50K right now. So yeah. it's it's brutal to go through these swings, but we've only seen it move like two or three buy-ins in any one direction. And this is totally normal. It's right. Gonna, it's yeah. the way it's going to go down most sessions. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a stretch or a subset of hands where it's just like 10 buy-ins straight in one person's direction. Yeah. Fill up 60k this session. They are just about 200 hands into this session. Playing a little bit slower of a pace than they did previous <clears throat> with about 35 minutes left to go and play. They've been averaging roughly 350 per two hour session. Looks like they're gonna get probably closer to like 300 this time. Assuming that our estimate is relatively close. If Landon does lose the match with the open door, the doors of the game to him, I, I don't, don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, because it's not like he'll lose by giving too much action. It's not like he'll lose uh, as a byproduct of just being fundamentally bad at poker. And he'll just lose because either he was outmatched or uh, things didn't swing in his favor. And no game runner gives a shit about that. Like, oh, this kid's unlucky. Maybe we can get him a seat. But Landon is very good at networking, so you never know. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. I think that, like, he's likable. He does bring things to the table that uh, game runners would enjoy. And there will be a certain subset of people who want to play with him. Like, he'll have opportunities to play some really soft spots, but it won't be the staple of his career. And that's true of pretty think, much everybody in the high roller scene, I think. I don't think Landon, I can't speak for him too much, but uh, for what I know about him, I don't think he would want that to be the staple of his career. Landon wants the, yeah, he wants to prove himself as being a great player. Yeah, I agreed. Which is definitely, he's definitely done so far and he's continuing to do. The ripe old age of 22. An old man. <laughs> You're old in poker standards, man. What are you, 25 now? 23. 20, oh, well, okay. <laughs> you got a couple years left. Yeah. What formats have you been playing most recently, Nick? You said you wanted to be great at all formats as six max, no limits, or your main game. Yeah, I've mostly been playing um, online six max six max cash although a lot less recently now live has opened up again and um yeah i still want to try and mix it up in some games but getting to this uh four better pot here landon an another four better pot landon was the like four better seen, here or perkins uh landon was the four better okay i feel like we've seen more four bet pots in this in this session than in the last three maybe the entire match altogether. yeah yeah, we seem to have lost the button on our graphics. Small bet here on 9-4 deuce. Perkins in the tank. Small raise. He goes for the click. Oh, these are miserable, man. <laughs> when a guy like Perkins min raises me, I either think it's a misclick or it's a set almost always. Hmm. See how this turn six of club plays. Snap jam. No decision for Perkins. Soft spot if Landon has a hand like Ace X, King of Clubs. Yeah. The gas trader really putting on the gas this session. Yeah, that's a that's a good way of, of saying it. What up, Brian Space? Good to see you here. He says, the price Landon is laying is large, especially considering he's not very experienced at exploiting people. Tilt and such by Perkins is less useful if you don't adjust very agilely and push the edges. I definitely agree with that, although I do think that he'll be able to dial in um, throughout the course of 20,000 hands. It's just a matter of being able to do so before it's too late. 
and I think Bill was like, Bill wasn't coming in as a fish. Bill was a like good heads up player, and the way that he's studying the game is by uh, taking a very theoretical approach. Mm-hmm. So there may be some small things um, that Ladin can adjust as well as Bill can adjust, maybe. Um, but it's not going to be the same as in a like a, a live cash game against uh, right. against some random Bill. We've got the got a really tough opponent. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. in In a live scenario, it's just like you get to pick these things apart because you're isolated to these individual spots that are relatively infrequent, all things considering. Um, so you don't get them at mass volume. Uh, which means that you just have to have a fair degree of confidence and accuracy whenever you're implementing. <clears throat> Here, it's like that times a million, right? Because if you think you recognize an exploit, but you're wrong, it could cost you like cents on the dollar now yeah. ex- uh, uh, extrapolated out over like thousands and thousands of hands where if i think i see an exploit live and i'm wrong it's only going to cost me cents on a dollar that one time landon goes for the lead on the pair in middle card which is extremely common and then bill takes it down with a race yeah we've seen this pretty much at 100% frequency, I, I haven't seen either player miss that one big blind lead on middle cards pairing. Antonio Martinez says, I wonder if you guys could talk about the role of an arbiter for uh, a match like this. I mean, it's same thing, or an arbitrator. It's the same thing you would see uh, an arbitrator use for anything, right? They're just there to settle any sort of disagreements that the two sides may have where there isn't a clear middle ground. Yeah, I think most of the sounds of this match were made public. Yeah. And are out there for everyone to see. Yep. Perkins winning about 70K today, give or take. Nearing in on that two buy-in range. All right, half an hour left. Let's see Landon claw some back. Yeah, we need some some coolers in our favor. Another four bet Another by Perkins. Four bet. I will say um, it did feel like in the first in the first couple of matches that Bill wasn't four bet too much, but maybe it just was the distribution as we really see a lot of four bets this match. Yeah, could be. It could be that he's just adding. Uh, or feels more confident adding a couple of hands. Maybe he wasn't for betting ace queen in the past. Maybe he is now. Um, given Landon's response of very rarely shoving, uh, it seems like a pretty viable strategic option to expand. But also, when Landon does have it and shove, <laughs> he just runs into it. I remember him five bet shoving once and getting a fold out of Perkins uh, throughout the course of this entire match. And that was maybe two sessions ago. Mm. So there could be adjustments taking place on the preflop ranges. But yeah, it could just be distribution, right? We could just see tens plus ace king, ace queen every single time he four bets. Could be. This has definitely been the most volatile session so far, though. Yeah. You can always tell which way it's swinging based off of the chat. Uh, when Perkins is on the uptick, everybody thinks that Landon is a rookie bum who is sitting with the big boys and doesn't have a place at the table. When Landon is just like slowly grinding Perkins away, it's just like, yeah, this is exactly what we thought was going to happen. The professional mm -hmm. was beating the amateur. As Landon goes for the overbet, and we see a snap call on the turn here. Interesting board to snap call. Everything misses. I just beats him in with middle pair. I guess you don't have many decisions there with the king nine.
timing definitely something to put maybe some small weight into. Yeah, it's so tough to tell. Uh, we just see so few hands that it's really difficult to compare and contrast by. Like yeah. the ones that have gone to showdown, you know, you could say like quick means good hand, but then like a hand like that King nine, it's like, ah, is it that good? I don't know. It's kind of in the middle. It's really difficult to extrapolate any real info out of it. And Bill's a very smart guy. He could right. easily be mixing it up. Yeah. Yeah, especially if like Landon takes some time to make his decision, Bill could have already randomized and just like have his action loaded. Back to the sparring. Just a bunch so of we're one for one. Spots. One for one in recess. This match. Yep. And then Perkins is up a little over a buy-in on each. Or combined, I guess. Another three bet and take it by Perkins. Who would you take if tomorrow they were changing the game to heads up PLO. I mean, I think Landon for sure. I think he's just probably, I think he's just hardwired a little bit better to extrapolate strategy out and, you know, kind of bucket hands into classes and then follow those incentives. Where I think Bill has become a lot more mechanically polished and he'll get like bet sizes and things like that correct but you just have so many more middle strength hands in PLO where you just have like so many more zero EV spots it becomes very difficult for a guy like him to figure them all out yeah that's a it's a tough one as far as I know Landon has played close to zero PLO yeah agreed but I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't take match. Landon minus nine blinds that's for sure Oh, no way. Yeah. And Bill's played quite a lot of PLO. Yeah. Um, he played heads up against Galfond. As we see a land in uh, four bet here. Nine four deuce. Nine four three. Going to be a uh, high C bet fine. frequency board. Yeah. There is the small bet out of Landon. Moonlight Master loves the four bet meta. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of big pots. It's good I, for your I'm, highlight videos. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what. What comes of it? It's getting to the point where maybe the players are adjusting. Maybe they're making some different moves with the amount of pre flop action we've seen this session. I mean, to be fair, like it kind of benefits Perkins to get outside of construction now and again if it's going to increase his uh if it's going to increase his uh aggression frequency right so like if say he's supposed to be four betting i don't know what's reasonable 10 percent of hands is that too many um it's about right okay so yeah if he's supposed to be four betting 10 percent of hands and he has like seven percent of or, or like let's say 75 percent of that range is just pure four bets and then he has like this 25 percent region that are just a bunch of low frequency four bets. If instead he just says like, I'm going to expand linearly and pure four bet a 13% range. What bad really comes of it, right? Like he hurts his calling well, range. Ex expanding linearly is very dangerous because now when he gets jammed on, he's right. going to either, he's going to either have to make some calls, which are like l losing or yeah, I guess I guess just losing this five bet. Well, in theory, sure, but like in practice, he's just gonna fold because Landon's five yeah. bet frequency has been so has been theoretically correct, but also very tight, right? So yeah. it seems to be mostly value, 
Um, and again, it's going to be the same construction, right? It's going to be X percent of value hands and then Y percent of uh, five bet bluff at, at some sort of mixed frequency. But I guess the point that I'm getting at is that like Landon's response to a four bet is probably going to be to call more frequently than it is to five bet. And for Perkins, giving up a small handicap of weakening his calling range, which is his passive action, uh, in lieu of increasing his aggression frequency, seems to be a no-brainer trade-off. Um, especially if like hands aren't getting shown down, and it's difficult for Landon and his team to dis to decide if this is just a distribution thing, or if he's like actually over four betting at this point. Yeah. I mean, if Bill was expanding, I would expect it to be in the polarized, polarized hands. Um, well, I guess that would be the correct way to do it. But uh, from the, uh, as far as like EV goes, you're obviously correct. Um, but as far as like functionality goes, I, I think for him, it it does make some sense to just do so linearly. Uh, maybe not so much in pairs. Like I don't really think he wants to start four betting like eights and sevens because it puts him in shit spots but more so like ace jacks and ace tens and king queens um because like i said he damages his calling range a little bit by eliminating those and putting them into a four bet range but he's probably not like crushing that node anyway and having yeah. like the blockers from landon shoving is probably just worth a lot if now landon's responding with a call and perkins just gets to navigate post with like some high equity hands yeah i mean it's not the i mean ace jack probably low like low frequency four bet but yeah you're you're not hating life if you're the four bet i see in a flop with base track off suit right you dominate you dominate quite often yeah um yeah i don't think it's a i don't think it's a i don't think it's a strat uh, a strategic option to employ indefinitely but it is kind of like a, a deviation that could monkey wrench land in a little bit when he's just assuming a correct four and five bet range yeah I mean, it's definitely worth saying that it's much more likely that this is just distribution. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that either player, I'd say, actually Bill, um, is mixing it up. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think the expectation is that Landon will toe the, the theoretical line. Much like Doug. Doug was very adamant the entire match of saying, like, I'm not deviating. I'm just going to continually get more theoretically sound and force him to beat that. And I think that's a really smart, good approach when you are the the favorite. Um, yeah. From Perkins' side, though, it's just like you have a lot of wiggle room with the spot to throw some Hail Marys and see if you can kind of steal some EV in spots where uh, the equilibrium changes based off of what you're doing and now theory isn't necessarily maximizing. Yeah, I think that could be like a fruitful thing to explore for Bill. Some of the toughest players to figure out in a very short sample size are the ones that are just randomly clicking buttons and throwing poo at you, you know? It's like <laughs> you get to you get to adjust pretty quickly when frequencies are totally out of whack, but in a 250 hand sample or 300 hand sample whatever we're dealing with here, the fact that like Perkins four bet percentage might be like 25 or 27 today it's not out of the realm of possibility that he's just getting premiums to yeah. do that with i mean we've, we've seen that when Adam has, has stuck in so. well that's the other side of it too is it it's reinforced by the few times it does go to showdown perkins is still up about sixty thousand this match Landon's clawed a little bit back. And Bill goes for the check call with the king there on the river. Do you think as the challenge goes on, the volatility is going to go up or down? The expectation would be down as both players get a little bit more sound in their strategy. But 
I think it might be a little bit results based. Like, I do think that there's some practicality, especially to the fact that they're only playing two hours each session for a different build to kind of show up each day and stay within the, stay within like the boundaries of theory, but do a little bit of expanding and contrasting here and there just to, to monkey wrench a little bit of the other side's plans. We only really get to recoup the equity over the long run whenever he is stepping out of line. But, you know, if Landon's team is tweaking and adjusting certain things based off what they based off of what they've observed, uh, it, it could just be short term fruitful for Bill. I think long term, it doesn't matter. Like Landon just stays the course and wins his win rate. The difficulty is we don't know what that win rate is yet. Is it? eight blinds is it 15 blinds we don't know and it's tough to say after 2300 hands yeah very true really would love to see a six hour club off yeah i think uh who do you think it benefits to to play a session that long like let's say that they play for six hours and basically break even or let's say uh more fairly they play for six hours and landon breaks even with the spot over that time um, who do you think having that much tape would benefit as far as like analysis goes? My instinct says that it benefits Landon. Um, I think Bill's very comfortable right now clocking in for the two hour sessions. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, who knows? Um, the, the pressure would be up for Landon as much as it would for Bill because I'm right. sure he's gotten used to the shorter sessions as well. Yeah, um, it's hard to say. Yeah, I kind of agree with um, your assessment. Would would be fun to see just one session, turn off the reset, just go go oh, for it for six hours. I would love to see them get like eight hundred blinds effective and just go nuts. That would be that would be a serious match. Yeah, <laughs> that would be very interesting to see. I'd love I'd love to see that. And they would both be in a realm that neither one of them have studied. Where yeah, neither team is studying 300 plus blind play mm. and I think one of Landon's strengths is that he has a very good theoretical understanding of just what he should be doing yeah and when he's when he's in the jungle um, who, who really knows how he's gonna adjust yeah how he's gonna play yeah agreed so I think that would be great for great for the fans uh, pro probably not gonna happen and uh, we shouldn't be too greedy I mean it's still some pretty sick action that yeah. we get to see every day yeah yeah um but yeah so this looks like a three bet check check landon checks a second time on the turn five as does bill river nine i feel like this probably slightly favors bill Landon's gonna have a lot of misses a lot of ace high king high on the flush draw variations of these boards, we would expect to see Landon um, check more often than check more often than bet if it was a rainbow board. Right. Because those hands which have a backdoor, which would have a backdoor flush draw, now have less EV over future streets. Yep. So, as well as having to check those hands more because they're worth less, he also has to check some stronger hands. So we might as well we might expect to see some. Uh, some double check or even triple check um, medium strength hands occasionally like yeah. we see that ace 10 of clubs there yeah it's interesting um, I'd be curious to see what, what Bill checked back probably a hand of showdown value himself an ace high perhaps uh, maybe a hand like king queen Russell says, I'd be hesitant to make too many adjustments from the preflop solver charts unless you see specific hands at showdown that might imply their range is so unreasonable. Yeah, that's definitely true. And I think it's much more likely that it's just distribution. Yeah. But I'm also not suggesting do... that Landon makes these adjustments. Yeah. But we, we do get a little bit curious when we see like maybe 15, <coughs> 16, four bets in a little over 100 hands. Right. More than, more than that even. Yeah. 
and also like we're not getting to see the showdowns so it's like yeah I, I think it's a very reasonable thing if like bill just never shows down ace jack in a three bet pot as the defender right like now all of a sudden maybe he is pure four betting ace jack but we don't know we don't get the I, I mean they don't even go to showdown that often and and we certainly don't get to see what hands are being displayed when they do yeah What up, Playable Jank? He says, just swinging by on lunch. Who's up today? Bill is winning. Seems to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 to 70. A little tough to tell just based off the fact that they've been swinging back and forth here. Um, but both players have reset once. And... Bill is out to a lead on both tables now with maybe 20 minutes to go 15 minutes to go oh 12 minutes to go time is ticking been the most action-packed in terms of all ins yeah for sure so far yeah i think we've seen five all ins maybe four all ins in a call for sure uh maybe even more i think perkins shoved Maybe four or five times without getting called. Three bet here by Perkins on the left. Over bet by Perkins here on the right. Wins both. I got to tell you, man. Today might be enough to move the market. All those six big blind spotters out there. Hit me up. Slide in the DMs. Well, when one guy gets in three flips and wins all three, hey. you certainly don't want to be playing six big blinds for hey. the other guy. Hey, man. Uh, nine big blinds for the other guy. Don't, uh, don't squash my action. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to see how much the market's moved, even after such a short time. Um, yeah, they've been swingy. <laughs> Session one build definitely came in a lot stronger than people expected. That was actually the swingiest match. Uh, Bill jumped out to 150k lead. Landon was then at his peak up 100, ultimately yeah. to win 20. He could have clawed it, clawed it back. Yeah, it was also the longest match. They played for three hours each, or they played for about three hours that session. It looks like we're back. I On YouTube? Back. All right. Well, I can't see anything, but apparently we're still rolling. There we go. Okay, we're back. I see the all right and no idea on the action in this hand but the turn went check check <laughs> oh no yeah. Are we dead again? On actual on actual YouTube, there's the stream is dead. The chat's again, rolling right now. Yeah, the chat's rolling, but the action's frozen. And also, extremely oh, we're, we're live, right? Hmm. Yeah, we're live. We're good. Oh yeah. It seems like anyway. Yeah, you're right. Can can we get some ones in the chat if we're live? All right. 
AFK one. We're good. Let's go. Nice, nice. Keep All the right. ones keep the ones rolling. Okay, we seem to still be here for the end of this match. Thank goodness. It doesn't look too much doesn't look like we missed too much. Perkins still winning just shy of a buy-in on the right and a little over a buy-in on the left. Likely to be good for plus 60-ish, 65k-ish. Swingy match. Just the way we drew it up, except, you know, the went the wrong way. direction. Man, there's check, nothing check. worse than seeing like two single race pots at the end of a yeah. match. That's you, this swung. is this is where we want to see some blood. Yeah, yeah. It's like now let's get all the four and five betting in. Let's go. Yeah. But I guess that's just because Landon's down. You know, if Landon was up oh, two yeah. hundred. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Then, you know, it is what it is. We can play some single race pots. Definitely. Roughly five minutes to go in the stream. We are coming to you live despite a few hiccups. This is Nick Marchington joining me for those of you unfamiliar. Young British man who final tabled the main. Where did you finish? Seventh. Okay. That's not ninth. That's worth something. Not ninth. I came in ninth. See? So, Ladders. Ladders. This is why ICM is important, everybody. Kid just made a million dollars by folding. Mm, fuck ICM. Play to win. <laughs> <laughs> Three bet here by Perkins. Fold. Looking forward to your class with next week, Nick. Thanks. Um, yeah, my, my uh, lectures are going to be based on a uh, macro game and how to construct overall strategies focusing on aggression so yeah i'm, I'm excited um i was just going through with matt uh, some of the stuff that i'm going to be going through um earlier so yeah i'm excited to to get in there i'll see you next week yeah for those of you who are are unaware nick is teaching week four of homeschool which will begin on tuesday uh, we did just do a dry run of his first lesson lesson. I think it's gonna be really helpful, really great stuff kind of comparing and contrasting the difference between pure and mixed strategies, as well as the responses to each and where we can kind of carve out mistakes, if you will, um, for our opposition, or at least recognize where mistakes are taking place and potentially create a strategy to capitalize. Man, I'm so greedy right now. I just want all the money to go in and land in to win so that we yep. can just have a very small plus or minus at the end of all this. Let's just see one more, one more full bet pot. Why not? Yeah, yeah, like, let's go. Just one more time. Nutter Butter says, what's the score? Perkins is up 60-ish, 65-ish maybe, give or take. Uh, we had a little bit of an issue with our... Hand counter crashing the system. So we're just going rogue right now. The the tech was too advanced. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. Having a, having a hand counter in. You know, technology is getting better and better every year. So maybe maybe 2022, 2023 <laughs> will be, be there on a hand counter. We just need to get bigger machines. Yeah. More RAM. All right, looks like we're going to be seeing the final few hands here. Matthew Marinelli says, Berkey crashing chat to dodge my question. I want to know when solve for why poker site launches. Um, 
like run at once poker? Never. I have no interest in owning or operating an online poker site. Um, and I don't have enough faith in things like Poker Bros to be my own agent, to be honest. Is that still a thing, Poker Bros? Yeah, I know guys are like barely beating 2.5 that are making like 30k a month as an agent. Well, wow. it's kind of crazy. There's a lot to be made by marketing yourself. Yeah, awesome. the apps picked up for a while in London as well. But yeah. even they're all, they're all six called Omaha now. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sure this question has been asked a million times, but given what you guys have seen, how many big blinds per hundred would you have landed in spot Perkins at this point in time? Or do you think nine is fair? I would be a buyer at six big blinds per hundred. Uh, or I should say I would be a better at six big blinds per hundred. I think nine is generous. Um, I think, I think our volatility at nine is very high. I feel pretty confident at six. We just don't lose that match very often. All right, I'm I'm gonna put myself out there. I'm not gonna be a politician like Matt. I think, I think Landon's crushing. At the nine. Yeah. Okay. Well, he didn't crush today, Nick. God damn it. Uh, well, you're also squashing my side sometimes. action. We're, we're trying, <laughs> we're trying to get the work here. All right, both players have wrapped. It looks as though they played for the button, and Perkins got the button in both. Uh, that is going to be it for today's gameplay. I think we're going to be joined by them. Um, not positive. We'll see. It's always a coin flip, especially when Landon loses. Uh, I think the young man is a little less apt to come on here and shoot the shit, but. Uh, we're going to wait around see if we can get those guys. Looks like Perkins won about 65k. Uh, it also looks like we just lost Nick, which is... Oh. I hear him. I just don't see him. It's okay. Put me off to the side somewhere. We're going to put you in the big box since Landon hates being in there uh, so much. Interesting match. Um, there was something I wanted to ask Perkins initially. Do you remember what it was? It was about a specific hand. Why is the video not working? Oh no. Hello? We hear you, brother. We just don't um, see you. Yeah, there was the there was the four bet pot delayed C bet on Queen Four Four. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm gonna gonna ask him if he had it. Maybe he'll tell us. That would be nice. <coughs> Landon Tice, aka the Skype logo. Joining us live <laughs> from the dungeon. Yeah. More. It's okay. On. We we lost Nick's video feed too. It's just me looking pretty, entertaining everybody while we get this technical difficulty sorted. I don't know, man. Is it huh. the same thing with the Brio again? Yeah, same thing. Maybe if I unplug it, replug it. Yeah, give that a shot. Um, or you can just plug in your other webcam. Uh. Yeah, I could do that too. We'll get the less crispy version of you. Yeah. I upgraded Landon to a 4K webcam, but uh, it comes with some... It doesn't want to work. Yeah, it comes with some issues. I see it. Do we I have the it. link? Uh, we got the link. Has anybody nice. gotten the link for Perkins? Got the link. Okay, we see your bed. Ah, uh, oh, there. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Young man. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. 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 Rocky day How's for you going? today, kid. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Talk lost to us. Lost flips. Did lose what some flips. What do you flips. want? Yeah, you lost some flips. Um, yep. How do you feel overall? Feel good. I think I played okay. Yeah. Some mistakes somewhere, but like nothing really too crazy. Just sort of... One of those days where I lost flips and that's it. Uh, what was the overall plus minus? Uh, I lost 67.7. Okay. Uh, so I lost like a buy-in and a half. Won like half a buy-in in EV. So okay. Not bad. And then... Look, free flop action in this one. Yeah. 
Yeah, there was a lot of that. Ran bad in four bad pots, and uh, that's kind of where the money was today. So can't really say too much about anything else. Like I think I played okay. I know, like I'm not really like emotional. <laughs> I'm just sort of it's like okay. Yeah, Plus. we never expect you to be emotional. Just more so. Uh, yeah. Delve into the finer nuances of, uh, you know, how the game flow went and. Uh, were you surprised to see so much four betting take place? Do you think that this is just a distribution thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, some days you're gonna run good, some days you're not. Today was not one of those days. It's pretty, yeah. pretty the fun though, cause like, you went like I went two flips, like, who knows? Like I'm probably just like up three, three and a half buy-ins, and then he's not as happy as he might be if he sure. won the flips kind of thing. Right. Who knows? But, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I can't speak too much outside of observing the Dneg's Polk match, but. Today actually looked like a reasonable amount of four betting. Um, it was just pretty yeah, one-sided. There, there was a lot of that. There was a lot of that today. For yeah, sure. but it, it kind of makes me think that there's just been like uh, an infrequency of four betting prior. Not really necessarily that anything was out of line today. I don't know if there's an infrequency, but more just like sometimes you well distribution have the wise. need a four bet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like I don't think anyone's like necessarily do anything different but just like sometimes you get cards where you have to four bet and then other times you just like don't sure. <laughs> i guess sometimes yeah. you win flips sometimes you lose them true how are you feeling about the two hour matches i feel okay about it it's like a reasonable enough time um like would i play longer sure but like i don't think it's anything like too serious of needing to play longer because like we did play a lot i think we played like 362 hands today really so yeah. Okay, I was going to ask that because I thought you guys were playing a slower pace today. Yeah, no. So, um, we played 2,400 hands so far. So, Pretty not significant. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what does the rest of... I assume you guys are taking the weekend off, so what does the rest of the next couple of days look no like? I have no idea. I have no idea what he's up to. He didn't... Um, you didn't see the my message yet okay yeah he may but just not be joining us he may not join and i mean we may play this weekend it's just i sort of i was making that assertion off of the fact that he said he has guests coming in for the weekend oh and probably yeah um what does that look like for you just more study time do you take some time off yeah probably just more study time like i feel pretty good about today i think yeah not necessarily too sure but i feel like I had a process and sort of stuck with it, but obviously made some mistakes here and there, but feel good about it overall. Yeah. Well, that's good. I guess uh, we'll just miss out on Perkins' victory lap since he hasn't seen your message yet, uh, and we'll catch up with him the next session. Yep. Okay. Um, that's going to be a wrap then for us. Nick, really appreciate you joining us. Landon, as always, thanks for taking the time. Uh, yeah, of course. Keep us in the thanks know. Me. We will uh, we'll schedule the next match whenever we get a chance. Yeah, for sure. I'll basically like know when you know. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right, guys. Thank you all for joining us. That is going to be session number six. As you heard from Landon himself, he lost about a buy-in and a half. Bringing things a lot closer, he's going to be up about a half a buy-in going into session number seven. Probably uh, losing to the spot ever so slightly, but uh, we're very, very early in this match. 2,400 hands in, going to be about 12.5% of the way done. We've got a lot to look forward to. I'm guessing that the next match will be sometime next week, so please tune in to the channel as always. We will alert you via social. Check out solve for ytv on Twitter or Instagram for full details as to when we stream next. Thank you guys all for tuning in and we'll see you next time.